Hello and welcome to the Waves Energy and Information Unit Internalization video. My name is Sean Tamarisk of KIPP, Massachusetts. And as the title suggests, the unit's all about sound and water waves. It's about energy and energy transfer and information, specifically communication. So the big unit question is, how do animals, including humans, use sound waves to communicate? And specifically, the anchor phenomenon we are looking at this unit is, how are dolphins communicating underwater in Stellwagen Bank National? National Marine Sanctuary. Stellwagen Bank is a real place off the coast of Boston. I chose to change it from the fake place that is in the Amplify materials. And here you'll find abundant life forms due to the upwelling and mixing of cold and warm water in this location. Students' job throughout the unit is to investigate how dolphins communicate and share that information with the director of the sanctuary. More specifically, how mother dolphins communicate with calf dolphins so that the calf can hear the mother and recognize the mother's distinct call. This unit's important because waves are actually a key part of how humans and animals communicate, for example, via sound, as these puffins demonstrate, and via technology using electromagnetic magnetic waves, such as radio waves, which cell phones use. Waves are an important concept in physics, and students are going to learn the basics of waves, such as wavelength and amplitude, and how those relate to volume and pitch. Students will also learn about tsunamis and how the energy from an earthquake or underwater landslide can be transferred thousands of miles through the ocean through waves and wreak devastation upon human settlements. So before we begin, please make sure you've completed this pre-work and make sure you've got the focus tasks and end of the unit assessment and unit internalization guide printed out and ready to complete as you work through this video. Go ahead and take a moment to do this, pausing now. All right, on to the chapter overviews. Lesson one starts by introducing students to the anchor problem of dolphin communication. And the big question is, how do animals communicate across a distance. Students start off by hearing different dolphin whistles and calls. What's that you said? Oh yes, I would love some sushi, thanks. And then learn about how sound travels as waves. They investigate two different models of waves by flapping a rope up and down to create what are called transverse waves and by pushing a slinky back and forth to create what are called longitudinal waves. Students then read the book Warning Tsunami about how tsunamis occur and some of the things that humans do to help prevent natural disasters from tsunamis. Students demonstrate a tsunami by standing in a circle holding hands and lifting their arms up one by one in a wave pattern in order to demonstrate that the water in a tsunami doesn't actually travel thousands of miles, the energy from the wave does instead. Each particle of water goes up and then down, similar to a person's hand, and impacts the next particle, but returns to where it started. Next, students use the sound wave simulator to visualize how waves are created by pushing particles. Here they can choose different instruments, hear them make a noise, and see how that noise is caused by the collision of air particles. Next, students read part of the reference text, Patterns in Communication, to learn more about bottlenose dolphin communication in order to help answer the focus task. At this point in the unit, students should understand progress build one. Most animals communicate using sound, and sound is made of waves, which are patterns of motion. In the progress build one focus task, students are asked to diagram and then write about how the mother dolphin uses sound to communicate with the calf. There's also a few multiple choice questions at the end. Go ahead and take a few minutes to complete the focus task now, and then check back here for answers. Go ahead and pause now. All right, so your diagram should have these key parts labeled and should have arrows traveling between the mother dolphin and the calf. You can choose to show waves or not at this point in the unit. A simple straight line would suffice as well. Now go ahead and compare your writing to the exemplar shown here. Pausing now. And go ahead and check your multiple choice answers. All right, on to big question number two. How does sound energy travel? We know that animals communicate using sound, and we know that that sound travels as waves from the source to the listener, but now we're going to get into a lot more detail about how exactly sound does travel through the water or the air. Students begin this part of the unit by making sounds on different objects and noticing how they sound different. Students then read part of the book Sound on the Move, where they learn that sound can travel through the air, through the water, or through solids, 
and each of these has slightly different properties as sound passes through it. Students experiment further in the sound wave simulator, looking more closely at the collision between particles. Students also look more closely at the slinky model and notice how the rings collide against one another and transfer energy in order to move the wave along. The individual rings return to the original position, but the wave continues. Students also experiment by colliding coins and note how when one moving coin collides, the energy is transferred from the moving coin to the stationary coin, causing the stationary coin to move. So energy transfer through collisions, which is the basis of how waves work. Students then demonstrate this by standing in a circular line and bumping their hands together one at a time in order to move a wave down the line. Students use a modeling tool to identify what's happening between the mama dolphin and the baby dolphin when they're communicating, as shown here, where each of these stars represents energy transfer occurring. At this point in the unit, students should understand progress build 2. Sound energy travels through material by causing waves of particles to collide. In this focus task, students do a more detailed written description of how sound energy is traveling through the water from the mother dolphin to her calf. Go ahead and take a few minutes to complete this focus task and then check back here for answers. Pausing now. Go ahead and check this exemplar, compare it to your own. Pausing now. Great, and here's the multiple choice answers. Go ahead and check your answers against these. Note that many students might not realize they have to draw on this diagram here. So as they take the test, make sure to point that out to them. All right, on to big question number three. How can we tell one sound from another? Now that we've established how sound travels, how was it that the baby calf was able to distinguish its mother's call from other dolphin calls. In order to understand this, we have to dig more deeply into what distinguishes one wave from another by studying the parts of waves. First, students experiment with changing the amplitude of a wave in the simulator by dragging the bar to make it larger or smaller, which changes the volume. And then hitting the play button, students can hear the difference and see the effects among the particles and the waveforms. Students then experiment with changing the wavelength of waves in the simulator from short to long, and again, hearing the difference between waves with a short wavelength and long wavelength, which changes the pitch. Students also create their own musical instrument out of a straw and feel how it rapidly vibrates to make a high-pitched noise. Next, students return to the reference text Patterns in a Communication and in order to learn more about the parts of a wave. Students then use a modeling tool to sort different types of sounds into both loud and quiet with high and low amplitudes and low-pitched and high-pitched with short wavelengths and long wavelengths. Next, students read the book Seeing Sound, where they're introduced to the way different professions actually use sound visualizations in their work, such as sound engineers or doctors or scientists. Students then listen to the dolphin whistles again from the beginning of the unit, and now pick up higher pitched and lower pitched noises as well as differences in volume, recognizing that each whistle is a little different. Students then read the book, The Scientist Who Cracked the Dolphin Code, where they learn more about how dolphins communicate and how scientists used waveform pictures to help them learn more about how dolphins communicate and to distinguish between dolphin calls. By this point in the unit, students should understand progress build three. Sound waves can differ in amplitude and wavelength, which is how we can tell one sound from another. In this third focus test, the superintendent of the marine sanctuary has waveform for us to look at and try and explain why the dolphin calf responded to one particular waveform or call and not the other two. Go ahead and take a few minutes to complete this focus task and then check back here for answers. Great. Go ahead and compare your answer to mine here and note how each of these uses a claim, evidence, as well as reasoning in order to explain each situation. And go ahead and check the multiple choice. All right, on to big question number four. How can humans use waves and patterns to communicate? This part of the unit covers an odd technology standard about encoding and decoding messages and information in order to use it digitally or in other ways. So it does feel kind of like it's been tacked on to the end of the unit. But it does help students understand some elements of how digital devices work and do things like display images. Students have fun creating an image on a grid and then describing it to their partner and vice versa. They return to the book Patterns and Communication to learn about the 
different ways that humans have communicated over time and how that communication has often involved codes when being sent over long distances, such as through a telegraph with Morse code or with signal cores in the military using colored flags. Students learn that computers and most digital devices work using what's called binary code, ones and zeros, that represent the position of electronic switches within the device. In order to display an image on the screen, for example, the ones and zeros must be decoded. Students go through this process using a teacher code here, they draw it on their own paper, and they end up with the letter A. Students use a coding simulator to code and decode images, text, and sound. Finally, at this point in the unit, students should understand Progress Build 4. There are multiple ways to transmit information across a distance, all of which involve using patterns as well as coding and decoding information. All right, on to the end of unit assessment. The first question assesses Progress Build 1. Go ahead and complete it and then check back here for answers. Pausing now. Great, you should have gotten D for number 1 and C for number 2. Once again, this assesses Progress Build 1 shown here. All right, here's a question that assesses Progress Build 2 about the parts of a wave and how waves work. Go ahead and complete it and then check back here. Great, you should have gotten B, a slinky, as this is the only example of showing how material collides and transfers energy then returns to its original position. And once again, this assesses progress build two shown here. All right, question number six and seven assess progress build three about amplitude and wavelength. Go ahead and complete it now and check back here, pausing now. All right, you should have matched the guitar with waveform B because it has a lower frequency, so longer wavelength, and the whistle with A because it's high pitched, so it has a much shorter wavelength. Low pitched sounds have shorter wavelengths. This is not to be confused with amplitude, which is the height of the wave and which relates to volume. And finally, this question assesses progress build four, testing students' ability to understand what it means to decode something. Go ahead and complete it now. Science rules is the answer. Should have known that. And once again, that assesses progress build four. If you haven't already, go ahead now and complete the rest of the end of the unit assessment so you get a feel for how each concept is being fully assessed. And I want to take a moment to thank you for taking the time to be as prepared as possible to teach this unit to your students. Here's some additional steps that you should take to get fully ready to teach this unit. All right, thanks again.